all right everybody assalamu alaikum so with this video we are going to start our online classes again looks like covid 19 has you know taken up the promise that it will make me a youtuber even though i don't want to chale ji <clears throat> start okay so uh, the drug which we are going to uh, the drugs category which we are going to discuss is the antiandrogenal drugs um at university when we were discussing congestive heart failure and other uh, diseases so you guys were very passionate about like i remember with every symptom you guys were like ulte haath mein dard hota hai you know left hand mein dard so here this is the thing which where we will actually discuss why exactly we do have a pain in the left hand side uh, or towards the left periphery of the body rather than the right side right okay so the drugs name is anti angioinal drug okay and with that there should be a question with you that anti means against angioinal what does that mean and drugs means medicines so what should what do we mean by angina this should be a question for you and in order to tell you that i have placed a image which is very movable so that you guys can predict what is the meaning okay <clears throat> so what do you think can you guys tell me in the chat box what what is happening to this lady or to this guy here what has happened to him i have opened up the chat box in front of me i don't know it's it will be recorded or not but i have opened up panji what has happened to him and why any ideas i am just doing brain brainstorming let me resume the recording okay so yes this is definitely the chest pain because of which the person is not even able to stand properly and the person is falling and of course it's very much visible that the problem is towards the left side instead of the right side can you guys tell me why why this pain is very much there why ma'am actually uh, blood flow kam ho jata hai heart ke andar okay yeah so blood blood flow is not that good okay what else do you think so is the reason for that yes beta okay anybody else who can give me the answer about it or else we can continue okay sana has said this we have position of heart towards the left side so feeling pain there when oxygen is not proper okay or more okay good <clears throat> why do we need oxygen why why does our body cells need oxygen oxygen though we, we usually say now that because of oxygen because of the oxygen in the air we inhale it and then uh we function properly right but why oxygen is so necessary that without oxygen we just can't uh, for proper movement as well we need oxygen good good sada uh rabia has said due to cardiac output abnormal blood flow very good very good so yes these are the few very important reasons behind it you see we need oxygen because our cells are doing cellular respiration right um if you remember i think i have discussed with you that our body need needs energy to do work right okay and atps are produced by the body when there is oxygen right provided to the cells and how exactly oxygen and not just oxygen our body also needs glucose okay so how exactly that glucose which is being absorbed into the um, into the blood at the side of the small intestine okay just imagine 
my brain needs glucose molecules okay so how exactly in just from the intestine okay all the way up to my brain okay the glucose molecules are being transported so it is definitely there because you see uh, the glucose get absorbed from intestine goes to the liver the glucose is converted into glycogen and then glycogen is converted back into glucose whenever it's needed and then it will enter into the blood and then it will go to my brain through the blood of course right okay similarly this oxygen is also needed by my heart cells right which are the cardiac cells and if oxygen supply will not be there so what will happen my cells would definitely start to die maybe right and i tell you what angina is one of the most common reasons or reason behind the death okay uh, we are going to dig into it and then we'll study so what has happened to him and why so of course this person is having chest pain and the chest pain is angina wait sorry it's angina pectoris okay so it is the principal symptom of patients with ischemic heart disease you all have studied pathology so you must know what does the ischemia word means can anybody tell me what does ischemic means yes reduced it is reduced blood flow okay awesome so when there is reduced blood flow so what happens If and I, oxygen cells not taking yeah oxygen will not enter into the cells and definitely the cells will become ischemic right okay so manifested by sudden and severe pressing substernal what do you mean by substernal it is about the sternum okay which is there um in front of the heart okay so beside the sternum we are having this pain okay which radiates and it goes towards the left shoulder and sometimes even towards the jaw and feet you know here also in the neck the muscle uh, the pain is being radiated and it's a severe pain but uh, car, uh this um, wait this um, yeah okay but uh heart attack is more painful as compared to this one but angina pectoris is definitely painful right okay other than that if we talk about it so we must know that sometimes you also feel angina when you have gerd if you remember we talked in our previous semester about gerd with there the gastrointestinal uh, uh, acidic reflux was there right and then because of that the uh, you know you feel the same kind of a pain right same kind of pressing pain okay all right <clears throat> so um okay so it is usually precipitated by exercise excitement or a heavy meal let's just say i am a person who who has uh, you know uh, who is a bit young and on on the verge of developing this condition okay so it won't happen all of a sudden right slowly and gradually this will start to occur it can happen by the way all of a sudden as well and inshallah in our next few classes we are going to study that why and how this can happen all of a sudden as well okay so the common causes of angina are coronary artery diseases now what is coronary artery if you look here these are the artery which are there spread it on the heart muscle right so these are the coronary artery now they their job is to provide heart muscles with abundant amount of food and oxygen right so if this coronary artery is uh, artery is not performing well so <clears throat> angina can happen right okay other one is valvular diseases aortic stenosis aortic stenosis is when the flaps just don't open that much okay so it can happen because of that then hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy so this is when the muscles get abnormally enlarged okay then it's hypertensive heart disease we have already studied that in the class in detail so i'm not going to talk in much more depth about it okay uh when we are talking about angina so we 
I think have come to the conclusion till now that here we are dealing with obstruction, right? And because of the obstruction, you see, we have two, three different re reasons behind it, right? Okay, so th this is a healthy vessel, right? Then we have the inflammation of arterial wall. And sometimes, if you remember last semester also, I, I introduced you guys to the terminology, arteriosclerosis, right? Okay, so what is arteriosclerosis? Arteriosclerosis is when the muscles get thickened up, right? Okay, and what is atherosclerosis? Atherosclerosis is when the fatty uh, tissues get plugged up inside the blood vessel, right? Okay, and then we had a case of vasoconstriction, right? For example, we just had a, a medicine which uh, led to vasoconstriction and because of that, the cardiac muscles are not getting enough oxygen. So because of any of these reasons, uh, either it's vasoconstriction, either it's inflammation, uh, atherosclerosis or arteriosclerosis, let's just say any of these conditions happen to the coronary uh, artery. So obviously as a result, what will happen? The cardiac muscles would start to die, right? Okay, so of course, the problem would be here. Angina, which is the chest pain, right? Vasospasm, fixed stenosis, which we have just discussed, and then thrombosis. Thrombosis is again, like I just said, any kind of obstruction can lead to the blockage of coronary artery, right? So it will cause the angina pain, and then it could also happen that maybe my heart is contracting with a lot of force than it should usually do, right? Uh, so if it's contracting with a lot of force or maybe it's, if it's contracting very frequently, let's say somebody has tachycardia, so what will happen in that condition when the muscles are working harder, so of course oxygen would be much more needed. When oxygen demand of the muscles would increase and let's just say i'm an anemic person okay my blood my blood does not have enough amount of oxygen in it okay so as a result i will have a pain in my chest which is known as angina doesn't this happen when let's say all of a sudden one day i decide to hike right so i am not habitual of hiking at all but all of a sudden, if some, you know, someday I, uh, I'll decide to go on a mountain and do some hiking. So definitely, I think after five minutes, I'll be tired, right? So uh, angina could be there, which is a pain, could be there. Now, there are two kinds of pain, right? One is, see, first category is when I'm working hard, when I'm like overexerting myself, right? Physically, when I'm working very hard. So what will happen? I will develop a chest pain and in order to cure the chest pain, in order to uh, 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 reduce the chest pain, what I should do? I should relax for a while, okay? And then maybe after 30 minutes, I'll be completely fine and I'll be good to go again, right? But let's just say the atherosclerosis is like very severe, okay? Or maybe other kind of other uh, other uh, conditions are there, arteriosclerosis, thrombosis, or anything. So what would happen then? Then my chest pain will not go uh, that easily and it would not require me to do heavy exercise. Maybe I'm just sitting on a couch and all of a sudden I'll develop this pain, right? So there are two kinds of chest pains we are going to do uh, to deal with. That means that there are two kinds of angina we are going to look into, right? Okay, so the first one I discussed is a stable angina, okay? And the other one is Prince metal angina, which is also called unstable angina. The stable angina is when there is a bit of the pathway, okay? uh for the blood to flow through the artery however in unstable angina or prince metal angina the blood blood's way is obstructed intensely okay 
so it will have a real hard time to flow through the artery okay um i'm sure you have studied that in physiology but still uh, i just want to talk to you a bit about it so this is pqrst wave right ecg acha um if let's just say if i'm sitting like that i'm in a casual environment and all of a sudden i'll develop a pain in my chest so what should the doctors do to me how should they find what's wrong with me any idea ma'am ecg nikalenge yeah they'll do ecg right the, that's the first thing uh, the doctors do whenever we go to hospital with a complaint about our chest pain okay so why do they take it out they take it out in order to find out if the waves are correct or not and i tell you what i'm sure you must have heard it that they say when you have a pain in the heart at that moment they want to do the ecg because that gives a correct and accurate you know result to tell us what's wrong and where it's wrong right so inshallah in the upcoming classes i will tell you how to read that ecg and i'll tell you how to spot where something is wrong okay all right so the important thing which i want to you to notice is this st segment right okay <clears throat> so when we talk about this st segment what is this this is the time during which ventricles are contracting and emptying right okay now let's just discuss that into more detail right uh, and i want you all to please look very carefully at the st wave okay at the st segment and then i want you to relate it to the other waves which are here i will discuss each of this curve one by one so you don't need to be worried at all okay it is very much important that you should understand how these waves are working in order to uh, you know understand the upcoming lectures which would need these to be you know the concepts should be there in order to understand anyways look here beta st st is very much there and it's how it's straight okay what was st st was time during which the ventricles are contracting and they are emptying right okay when i relate this concept to my left ventricle this red line okay which is telling me about the left ventricle okay so you see a lot of pressure is being applied right right now i want you to ignore this green wave i want you to ignore this purple wave right now i want you to just focus this blue wave and this red wave okay acha ji so this blue line is having this st line here is st segment here which is indicating that ventricles are getting emptied and if you look over here at the red line here it's saying mmhg mmhg means pressure right so here it means that the maximum pressure is supplying is 120 if you remember when uh, we were discussing in the class about the pressure which is required for the blood, uh, for the heart to pump out Oh thank you so much thank you so much kubra i was mute oh my god that's weird okay 
So, beta, look. Um, was I mute for only a small amount of time, or I was mute for a long time? I just got. I just muted myself, or did I deliver half of the lecture in the muted form? Ma'am, you were mute from the start. What What is the last slide? Oh my God! Did Did I explain this to you? Did you hear me when I was explaining this? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Oh ho! Say yes, say yes. I got it. Acha, beta, look here. The purple okay. and green line. Ha! Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much. Acha, beta, look here. I want you to ignore this green line and the purple line and quickly look at the blue line. Okay. So this is the ST segment, and if you look at the red line, okay. Uh, so this is here. It's the peak, right? Okay. So the peak is indicating the pressure, okay. So when it has reached one twenty, then the peak starts to fall down, and when the peak starts to fall down, okay, it means that now is the time when ventricle is getting back into its original form, right? Uh, so it has done. By end of this peak, by the middle of this peak, it means that it is done with applying force, and now it's releasing force, and then it's becoming back into its original shape. Right, everybody? Acha ji. So I'm sure you have understood these two parts of the wave. Now I want you to relate this to the purple wave. Right? Okay. If you remember, we talked about action potential in our uh, last few uh, classes in the last semester. So we talked about depolarization. We talked about repolarization. The same concept actually applies here. Okay, that is in this part. Okay, sodium is getting inside. All right, <clears throat> and over here, it's repolarization when actually potassium is potassium is getting. Um, Potassium is getting inside, right? Okay. No, sorry. Potassium is getting outside. Okay. Now the thing is this: when we are talking about repolarization, okay, when sodium here, wait, let me write. Here, sodium is getting inside, okay, and here, potassium is getting outside. Wait. Potassium is getting outside, okay. So, if you relate it to the action potential which we studied last semester, if you remember, that looked something like this, right? Can anybody tell me that why it not did not go straight like this? Why, why it had to, it had this line where it was straight. Any idea? What could, if I'm saying here from here, potassium is starting to get out, right? So there should be something, no? Something could be enter entering inside, okay? Something something would be entering inside, which is positive in nature, which is balancing it from getting reduced. Can you think of any element which is needed? Sodium, Kubra. Sodium has already entered, and after reaching here, after reaching till tw plus twenty millivolts, okay, it will stop. It will stop getting inside, and then the other other things, you know, function would start. Okay. Yes, Rabia. Mem calcium. Awesome, Rabia. Awesome. Superb. When we are dealing with cardiac muscle, you should keep it in mind that this this diagram we talked when we were discussing skeletal muscles, right? And this diagram we are talking about the cardiac muscles, right? Even if you look here, here it's saying cardiac action characteristics and all that, right? So here we are discussing the cardiac thing, and for cardiac thing we talked. that we need calcium in order to pump it out right 
okay so if you look here while it's having its peak okay a lot of calcium is entering inside and that is why it's stay is staying at the same position okay and you could predict that a lot of calcium would be needed in order to contract the muscles even more and which is why a lot of force was being applied right okay <clears throat> so uh, all right so guys i'm sure you have studied these three these three curves were very important for you to know that is st segment the purple curve which is ventricular action potential you should know difference between both skeletal and uh, cardiac action potential and then we talked about uh, pressure right okay because in my upcoming classes we will be discussing these segments in more detail okay when i talk about types of angina so i have two types one is stable other one is unstable when we talk about stable it says can walk a few blocks and gets chest pain pressure and has to take a rest or take a uh, trinitrile glyceride uh, okay i'm not going to talk about medicines right now okay we'll talk later on, on in our next class all right so here when we are talking about our unstable prince medal one so here they are saying that they the person who have this they are generally very active can walk long distance and will not get any symptom okay when do symptoms occur so what will happen as i said if somebody has stable angina okay so what will happen occurs with any exertion requires rest to or a medicine to relieve any time they exert themselves this can happen and if somebody has prince medal so usually at rest and present like an um, myocardial infarction crushing chest pain mostly common at midnight okay then is ekg and symptoms so here we do have the symptoms and rhythms which we will be discussing when i will teach you anti arrhythmic drugs uh, when we talk about elevation so beta this thing i want you to literally cram up okay so here they are saying st segment is elevated and here they are saying st segment is depressed one uh, one learning method which i want to share is this that uh, because that's how i try to remember this thing it was this that when it's um, you see this ischemic angina the stable one is related to exertion so with exertion you pull it down okay so that's why it's depression right okay so very quickly when we talk about finding so the unstable one is usually related with spleen coronary arteries might see an artery spasm and in the stable one we see blockages in cor coronary artery if you look here i talked about st elevation and we talked about st depression what is this you should really know that so you see a normal ecg wave this look like this right p q r s complex and then this t and this st segment is here on which i really uh, uh, laid a high amount of emphasis now if you look over here it, it here st elevation is there here it's upward okay and here it's downward right they have made like really really up here okay it it could also be like this it could also be like this okay uh, by elevation we mean that other than the resting membrane here it has to be a bit higher it is elevated okay and when we are saying depressed it means that it is down here right beta okay okay now how to save this guy how to save him any idea what should we give to this person in order to save this person what should be my target can anybody tell me in the chat box or uh, you can turn on your mics to tell me what do you think we should do mem beta blockers beta blockers theek hai good very good beta blockers retinol yeah. okay awesome awesome 
we are giving the person uh, beta blockers. Why? Because the beta blockers would uh, decrease the amount of uh, contractility, okay? And it will put the heart towards the uh, slow position, okay? Towards the slow going side. And then when the muscles won't contract more, so they won't need a lot of oxygen. And therefore, because you see, we have two problems here. One is oxygen demand is high and oxygen supply is less, right? So in order to cope up with the oxygen demand, very good, Rabia, you said it right. I'll give the person beta blocker. What else should I give the person? Uh, okay, Sana, you're right. But I want, I want the generic answer. Why, Rahat, why are you saying that in the chat box? Why? Why non hydromen Why? 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 You see, you. I want you to talk right now very broadly. Okay. Do not give me names of the medicines right now. I want you to tell me. Tell me names of. But don't. Because don't tell me. I know these are very famous medicines. Okay. Uh, I know that. Um, I, I, even I remember when I was a child. So uh, we were literally taught by our parents and grandparents, of course, that whenever you find somebody in a panic mode or, you know, holding the, he uh, holding the heart and stuff, you should quickly give them aspirin. But right now, uh, and, and, and it's good that if somebody has a stroke or, you know, you see anything like that, so you can obviously give that person that. But right now I'm talking about the general thing. I want you... Like, for example, Rabia has said beta blocker and I was like, wow, yeah, we did it. What is the other thing? I want to, okay, I want to do two things. Very good, very good. In the Mahusen, very good. We would give this person the calcium channel blocker so that the heart won't contract more, right? Now, one more thing, tell me. What should, what, what else can we give to this person? in order to stop him from falling like that. Hanji. Guys, think. Okay, let me give you a hint because time is very less. Um, there is vasoconstriction. Awesome, Rabia, very good. Rabia just said that vasodilator, so yes, I would give this person all of these medicines, okay? Uh, yeah, Sami. Okay, Sami. All right. So the thing is that we need to depress the activity of the heart and we need to dilate the vessels, right? So in order to dilate the vessels, if you remember, we talked a lot about nitrogen oxide and nitrates in our previous semester. So we'll definitely give the person nitrates. We'll give them calcium channel blockers. We'll give beta blockers. We'll talk in more detail in our next class. So the treatment plan is decrease the risk factors like atherosclerosis, hypertension, and smoking, increase oxygen supply, decreasing oxygen demands, and agents. We are going to have nitrates, calcium channel blockers, and beta blockers. Everybody, that is it for today. Thank you so much.